In this lecture video, we are going to talk about isentropic efficiency. Isentropic efficiency is defined for a steady flow process or a steady flow device. It is a measure how close the steady flow process approximates a isentropic process. It is a ratio of two energy or power quantities. It is dimensionless and uh, it can never be greater than one, or it's never even equal to one. And uh, what complicates things is that uh, the isentropic efficiency definition varies, depends on what process we have. First, let's look at uh, a compression process. Now here we have a enthalpy entropy diagram, HS diagram. And on this diagram, we show the saturation dome, the saturation lines. On the left-hand side, you have the saturated liquid. Right-hand side, saturated vapor. And top of the dome is the critical point. The two blue curves are isobaric lines. And on this diagram, we show a, isen we show a uh, compression process. Now, this process, this process goes from 1 to 2 vertically this process is a isentropic process because on a hs diagram a vertical line represents a isentropic process and we should know that if we compress a superheated vapor uh, its enthalpy would increase and then you can simply apply the energy conservation principle to that process and you can see that uh, when you compress a uh, uh, fluid and there's no heat transfer the enthalpy of that uh, fluid must increase and certainly this is a referring to a steady flow process happening in the control volume okay that corresponds to a enthalpy change of uh, h1 minus h2s and this is a um, uh, this is a this value itself should be negative. So if you want to consider the, the, the magnitude of uh, enthalpy change, it should be the absolute of uh, the, the, the difference of these two quantities. Now, we see in reality, the compression process is uh, not isentropic because there is, I there is irritability in the process. Now, if that process is still adiabatic, that means we compress it and we compress the fluid in the non-reversible, in an irreversible and yet adiabatic way. Then based on the entropy increase principle, we know the entropy of the fluid must increase. So the end point of that uh, compression process, of the irreversible compression process, must be to the right of the start point. And uh, the way we determine where that final point ends, where that uh, end point is, is that uh, we, we assume it ends on the same isobaric line as on the, uh, as the, uh, the isentropic case. So because two, the point 2s, the isentropic end point, ends on this P equals P2 isobaric line. So our actual process, that's Irre irreversible also should end on the the same isobaric line because for a compression process as a as far as a compression process is concerned the end point uh, the outcome should be the same pressure so uh, we evaluate the situation by assuming that uh, the end point is still on the isobaric line but with a increased entropy so Due to the nature of the isobaric line, um, the point with higher entropy and on the same isobaric line must uh, be at a higher point, uh, having a higher enthalpy. So the enthalpy change, starting from the same starting point, the enthalpy change for a non isentropic <laughs> compression process should be greater than a isentropic compression process. Okay, so in other words, the non-isentropic compression process would uh, require a larger amount of energy 
than if you do this process in an isentropic way. Now, guess how we would uh, define isentropic efficiency for a compression process? Remember, isentropic efficiency is defined as the ratio of two energy quantities. Here we have two energy quantities, two enthalpy change values. And one divided by another should be the isentropic efficiency. So it should be H1 minus H2S, or H2S minus H1 divided by H2A minus H1. This is the isentropic efficiency of a compressor. Now let's again look at the uh, expansion process. Still, we show this expansion process on the HS diagram. We show the saturation dome and two blue isobaric curves. And imagine we have a, um, a superheated vapor and it's expanded in a turbine. And it starts from point one. This is the start point. Isentropic expansion would mean that it's a, it should go through a vertical line. Now this time, because it's expansion, it's doing work to the outside. So its enthalpy decreases. It comes down to this point, 2S. And that's the isentropic endpoint of uh, the isentropic expansion process. And this corresponds to a uh, uh, enthalpy change of uh, or enthalpy difference, uh, H1 minus H2S. However, the actual expansion process would involve irreversibility and the, the uh, it's non-isentropic. If we assume that the process is still adiabatic, based on the entropy increase principle, the entropy of the of that uh, process would increase. Um, would increase the fluid entropy. And if we let the endpoint be on the same isobaric line based on the uh, assumption that the, the, the end state of the process uh, would be limited by the same pressure difference. So because of that assumption, we have uh, the uh, endpoint at a higher level in terms of enth enthalpy. So in the expansion process, if a if the working fluid undergoes a adiabatic non-isentropic process, adiabatic and irreversible process, the enthalpy difference, the enthalpy change would be smaller. Again, um, this tells us this suggests to us the isentropic efficiency definition for an expansion would be different than that for the isentropic efficiency definition for a compression process. And the turbine, in this case, turb uh, expansion would happen in the turbine process. This expansion, uh, this isentropic efficiency would be H1 minus H2A divided by H1 minus two, uh, 2S. Now, likewise, we can also define the, uh, okay, here, this, this slide shows the compressor, uh, compression isentropic efficiency as I have uh, uh, explained previously on the slide. And uh, you can see uh, by saying that uh, the work involved is equal to the enthalpy change, we are assuming that uh, delta Ke and uh, delta Pe are negligible. So they're approximately zero. And uh, we realize that the isentropic compression would uh, correspond to enthalpy change between these two points, higher enthalpy change. And the, the isentropic efficiency, because it needs to be smaller than one, should be the, uh, the work required in the isentropic process divided by the work required in the actual process. Now the turbine isentropic efficiency, which is the if I, uh, isentropic efficiency defined for a expansion process, um, I also briefly explained in a previous slide. So here the work is equal to enthalpy only if we have uh, the delta Ke, delta Pe uh, approximately equal to zero. And uh, the isentropic, um, sorry, may, let's correct uh, these typos, this should be, um, isentropic, uh, non-isentropic expansion. And this should be non-isentropic expansion. Uh, 
And the uh, isentropic efficiency def for a turbine is defined as the actual work output divided by the isentropic work output because the former would always be smaller than the latter. Now we can also define isentropic efficiency for a nozzle device. We know a nozzle is a device that's used to accelerate a fluid. So a nozzle and then you have a fluid entering and you have the fluid leaving at a greater velocity. And uh, the, the reason the uh, velocity of the fluid would increase is because its enthalpy is converted to uh, kinetic energy. So if we neglect the change in the potential energy and if we assume there's no heat transfer in this process, we, we can draw these lines to show a adiabatic process and also there's obvious, it's obvious uh, that, that there's no work involved in the nozzle process. So um, the um, e energy uh, balance equation for a nozzle process would be this. Um, the nozzle's isentropic efficiency is defined as the kinetic energy at the exit, the actual process divided by the kinetic energy at the exit in a isentropic process. Now, if we neglect the, uh, uh, if we think the v the velocity at the entrance of the nozzle is neg negligible, then the energy. Uh, the, the kinetic energy of the fluid at the exit would be equal to the enthalpy change in the nozzle. So we can write the, the isentropic efficiency of the nozzle in such a way. Now let's quickly um, note that uh, the energy conservation equation we use when, de when developing the uh, isentropic efficiency definition, the energy conservation equation either for nozzle or turbine or compressor, the energy conservation equation is the same energy conserva conservation equation whether the process is actually isentropic or non-isentropic. However, the energy, uh, e the energy terms will be different determine, uh, b depending on whether the process is isentropic or not isentropic. Now let's quickly go over this example. Uh, in this example, we have a refrigerant. The refrigerant is compressed in a compressor and it begins as a saturated vapor. And uh, it's we know the rate of uh, the flow rate of the refrigerant, and we know the exit pressure of the refrigerant from this compression process. We also know the isentropic efficiency of the compressor, and we are asked to determine the temperature of the refrigerant at the exit of the compressor and the power input in kilowatt. Now we have the isentropic efficiency of a compressor given here and we just uh, dis discussed the isentropic efficiency of the compressor so I hope your memory is still fresh. However, I would uh, ask you to think about how to draw this process, this compression process on a HS or a TS diagram. Now you would you would not be able to tell the difference between a HS diagram and the TS diagram unless you know the the uh, the numbers of the uh, the, the values of uh, the property. Qualitatively, they should look the same. So can you draw the TS diagram or HS diagram, uh, including the saturation dome? for this compression process, both isentropic and non-isentropic. Okay, here we have this um, TS diagram drawn and with the saturation dome with the blue line representing the isentropic compression process. The lower point is the start point. We know it starts at the saturated the vapor and uh, you compress it, it should go up because of the energy relation, re re relations and uh, it should go up vertically to into the superheated vapor region. Now the blue line represents the, the isentropic process, the isentropic compression process. The actual process would end on the same isobaric line. This is an isobaric line that represents the pressure. The pressure is one megapascal. And the actual process would end somewhere here. Let's call it 2A and this is a 2S. 
So what we can do is we can find the enthalpy difference between one and two s because we can find all the properties at both the initial point and uh, the final point in the isentropic case. Then we can find the uh, the power consumption for the isentropic case. We also know the compressor has a certain isentropic efficiency, which relates the actual power consumption and the, the isentropic power consumption. So if we already know the isentropic power consumption and the isentropic efficiency, we can calculate the actual power consumption. So that's the strategy. Okay, now let's develop the solution. First, we find the isentropic compression, the end point. Uh, from the beginning point, we know it's uh, 120 kilopascal and saturated vapor. We can go to the saturated vapor table and we can go to the saturation table and find everything, including entropy of uh, the uh, saturated vapor. This is uh, very important because this value needs to be transferred over to point two, the end point of the isentropic process. And then we can find the, the, uh, the final um, enthalpy of the isentropic process. And we, from the uh, isentropic efficiency relation, we can calculate the final, uh, we, can f uh, we can find the, the, uh, the, uh, the final enthalpy of the non-isentropic process because we also know the pressure, we know the enthalpy from the two, we can identify the temperature of the actual uh, final point of the non-isentropic process. Then we still need to find the mass flow rate in order to determine the power. Uh, the mass flow rate can be found by uh, dividing the volumetric flow rate of the, uh, of the refrigerant by the specific volume of the refrigerant. Now, keep in mind we have to uh, do uh, we have to use the uh, volumetric flow rate and the specific volume at the same point because the uh, the volumetric flow rate and the uh, the volumetric flow rate and the uh, specific volume are different uh, depending on where you are in the process. The end point and the the uh, the initial point have different values. Then, if we assume the uh, if we assume that kinetic energy change and potential energy change are both zero, we can find the power output or power, power requirement of the compression process.